morning. Welcome to Virtual Church. We are so happy to have you with us and that you are here as part of our congregation and community. <sighs> Stressful week, huh? I get it. I get it, you know. And what I have to remind myself when I start to feel that stress creeping up into me is this too shall pass. That's what it says in the Bible. It does not say it came to stay. It says, and it came to pass. And so I remind myself that again and again and again. Years ago, we used to have this wonderful uh, healer come to our church. He's passed on now. His name was Ron Roth, and he gave us something that I've always found very, very valuable. And he says, you know, when your mind is just running and you're going crazy in here and you're just having all these thoughts and you know they're the thoughts you don't want to be having, you know, he said, all you have to do is just take a breath and say, Spirit, peace to my mind. Spirit, peace to my mind. And when your emotions are... Spirit, peace to my emotions. You know, and I, I feel the stress creeping into my body, and I can feel it. I can feel it. It just comes right up here into my chest or my stomach and just goes... I go, ah, oh, spirit, peace to my body. Peace to my body. Peace to my body. And I find it just allows me to take a step back and take a breath and say, okay, okay, I can do this. A few weeks ago, I talked about this wonderful idea from the teaching of Emma Curtis Hopkins where she said, I am of the race of Christ. I think this is so important for us because it allows, it allows us to draw a bigger circle. You know, uh, I, I, I'm reminded of the line from the Maya Angelou poem where she says, we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. We are more alike than we are unalike. So if I am of the race of Christ, that means you are of the race of Christ. That means we are of the race of Christ. That means they, whoever they might be, are of the race of Christ. So everywhere I look, every man, woman, and child I see on the face of the earth is of the race of Christ. I find this to be such an empowering and freeing thing. I don't need to think any other thought about anybody other than you are of the race of Christ. See how, how that makes like a bigger circle for us? And everyone, everyone absolutely is included. I wanted to continue talking this week about um, creativity, which I was talking about last week. Um, and I think that um, everybody, everybody, because we are spiritual beings, that every man, woman, and child is a creative being. And, and this is why I think science of mind this philosophy works so well here for people in Los Angeles because so many people here do one, two, three, a dozen different creative things all at the same time. And I think that Ernest got that. Ernest Holmes, our founder, knew that people in Southern California were intensely creative people. So much was happening here at that time in, the, in our country uh, when Ernest Holmes was writing and teaching and speaking and ministering. And he just knew that this kind of thinking could really support creative people in moving to their next level of expression. You know, that creativity and spirituality have been linked, we know, for thousands of years, going back to the ancient Greeks um, and even, even before that. See, because creativity, we believe, is an expression of the spirit that you are. And I think that everybody is here to create. And you say, well, create what? You know, I didn't come here to write a novel, or I didn't come here to make a movie. Or maybe you did, which is wonderful. But to create a life that you love, to create a wonderful, loving family, to create meaningful relationships and rewarding work experiences, create a healthy body, a home that's beautiful to you. You know, spirit that we are is the vessel through which we create. And you know, we all have free will, we all have choice, so we can choose not to create. Or we can use our free will to say, no, nah, that's, that's just not something I can do. But the important thing to remember is that the universe that we live in is always responding to what we think and what we say and what we do. And that means it's responding to what we think and say and do about ourselves, about our own creative expression in the world. You know, because the universe just mirrors back to us all the time what we put out. The way we put our energy and our belief and our thought out into the universe is what the universe brings back to us. And of course, you know, I know there are some things that we create intentionally and even some things that we create unintentionally, 
but do not think that the universe is ever sleeping. The universe is responding to everything. So the point of this is that everything we do, every thought, every word, every deed has an effect. I mentioned last week that beauty is what God's love looks like. And I believe this is true. So this week, as I've been out living my life and doing what I do, I keep trying to see beauty in the world. This has just been fun. And I hope you will join me in this. Whether you're seeing flowers in somebody's yard or somebody with a baby or a puppy or whatever is beautiful to you, a beautiful sky. And, um, and that just reminds me, you know, when I see something beautiful that God is present and God loves me, God loves you so much that God has placed something beautiful in our path for us, for us to appreciate. Mm -hmm. Now I understand everybody has different gifts to give and I think that's wonderful. That's what makes life and earth so interesting. So I asked you to think about this past week, you know, what is longing to be expressed through me? What's longing to be expressed through me? Because I believe that the Spirit of God has placed that idea, that inkling, that impulse within you. So it's probably something somewhat different than what you'd ever done before. Otherwise, you'd be doing it right now. And, and I know for myself, and I believe this is so for all of us, that if we have an inkling, a hunch, an aha, a little guidance that that, in fact, is the voice of God prompting us to express in a greater way. Remember, when we talk about God, we talk about infinite loving spirit. Spirit that we're, we are in relationship with does not want to control you. Spirit is so much bigger than that. The spirit, I believe, seeks to fulfill each of us, okay? Very different than controlling. Spirit seeks a greater expression of itself by means of us so that it can experience its own fulfillment. In other words, so we can be fulfilled. Hmm? Um, there is, and I've been fascinated by this for a number of years, the Gospel of Thomas. And in the Gospel of Thomas, he says, this is a very, uh, a largely unknown gospel, that if you bring forth what is within you, what is within you will save you. I mean, think about that. God has placed everything within us that we need to have the life that we want to have, right? But Thomas goes on and says, but if you do not bring forth that which is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. Mm -hmm. And so I, I understand that, and I suspect you do too, that there is a lot of unfulfilled potential within all of us, you know, where we throw up the wall or close the door or draw the line or say, no, no, I can't go beyond that. You know, Emerson has that wonderful phrase, I've loved this since I first came into metaphysics, about you have to get your bloated nothingness out of the way of the divine circuits. And boy, some days I'll tell you that is a bigger job than I ever realized, that I am very, very bloated with nothingness. Um, <laughs> but remember, what is longing to be expressed through you is of God. What is longing to be expressed through you is of spirit. And, and so that's what I'm asking us to really consider, what am I here right now at this point in my life to give voice to? Something that, it's something that can only be expressed by, by you, by me, by our voice. Because you know, this means that if you have something to share, if you have something to say, if you have an impulse to create, there are people who would benefit, people who would be uplifted, people who would be healed by your voice that they could only hear from you. That it wouldn't do the same thing from somebody else. Because you know, sometimes we say, oh, well, so many people do what I do. How can what I do make an impact and stuff like that? If you have something to do, if spirit has placed within you some unique expression, and I'm sure spirit has, then there are people who would be benefited, uplifted, and healed by that in a way that they could not be benefited, uplifted, or healed by anyone else. So it's not a mistake. You know, and, and it's always funny to me because it's not our business who we benefit. It's never our business. That's, that's spirit's job. God will bring the right people into our life to benefit from what we offer in the name, in the spirit of love. So I, I, I roll with this all the time, and it's, it's, um, it's such a big part of the spiritual life that when I look at what stops me, what stops us, 
you know, is, is fear. And we cannot let fear run the show. Now, certainly all fear is not bad. Now, you know, if you've had children, that they say that babies come in to life and they have just only two fears. They're afraid of falling or they're afraid of loud noises, okay? And um, so I'm on board with that. I agree with, yep, <laughs> I don't like loud noises and I don't want to fall down either. Um, but there's also, you know, um, fear that supports us in that instinctual way, um, you know, don't get too close to fires and uh, things we might have to do for our survival. So, you know, in our teaching, excuse me, <coughs> we rely very much on God to provide. In fact, our textbook says that God has already done everything that God is going to do. Wow. So what we're saying here is that it's all been given. God has already made the gift. And I think it's only polite cosmically to be a gracious receiver. After all, if God's made a gift, then you should graciously receive it and try to use it. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Because it seems to me that the whole point of having a gift is so you can give it away, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's the thing. We, um, you know, in God, there is never loss. I mean, I can't tell you how often I put my keys someplace and I can't find them and I have to walk around the house saying, okay, nothing is lost in God, nothing is lost in God. But this is also true about opportunity, about expression, nothing is ever lost in God. So, so what this means, I believe, is that we can never, ever lose. So I was thinking, sometimes, though, we just feel blocked or stifled or stuck. Um, or maybe we even do it to ourselves. And so I've, I've sort of run with this this week, and the first thing that came to me was, I don't express sometimes because I'm afraid of what other people will think or say. Yeah, I, that, that fear of being judged by others. This stops me, it, perhaps it stops a lot of people. Um, that sometimes people don't do what's in their heart because they can't see how they're going to make a living at it or how they're going to make money at it. And I think we have that backwards. I think you have to do what's in your heart and then the universe will provide you opportunities. Something people say often now is, I have to be better educated to do this. And I don't know that that's actually true anymore. That might be old thinking. And sometimes, yes, and I am guilty of this, sometimes it's just laziness. You know, that I can't commit to my own step forward for my own creativity. So, so I want to not let my best creativity be the reasons and excuses I have for not creating, <laughs> right? That I have to take responsibility. And this is not about blame. So, you know, when we say responsibility, it's, there's no blame here. It's not even blaming yourself, but the saying is, if it's to be, it's up to me. So our spirit is a force of creation. Now, I think all of life holds the potential for creativity. Look, I, I don't do a lot of these other creative mediums that, that people do, and I think it's wonderful that they do. I do like to cook, and so I find that a lot of my creativity comes out around food. That's probably because I like to eat, too. But the truth is, I like to feed people. I don't know, it's genetic. It's just something in my family. My mom was a cook and was always feeding people. My dad was in the grocery business. So it was always about food going out to help to, to, to include uh, other people. So, so I think that's where, for me, where that comes from. And, and, I, and the fact is, I just really, really enjoy the process. Um, see, I think what happens is God gives us an idea. And it becomes ours to take the idea out into the world, into form. So the first thing that occurs to me is there's a period of preparation. After I get an idea from God, after Spirit says, hey, you should create this, you should express this way, I do this period of preparation. Uh, you know, and, and some people, though, do the preparation, you know, where the ideas are flowing and we're learning the craft, but they never actually express. And I have certainly been guilty of that. Um, I think that sometimes we do our creative expression, but then 
what I'll call today this inner critic shows up. You know that voice, that voice that's always more than willing, more than willing <laughs> to tell you you're not good enough, you're not doing it right, that other people are doing it better, why do you even bother, on and on and on. So there's that piece, and then I think there's the piece about what we do after our expression, what we say to ourselves after. No. So, so, so you've done your creative expression, you know? Um, you're not particularly thinking that you're sabotaging yourself or being hard on yourself, but you know this inner critic has such an insidious way of coming up. So you know, a story I heard years ago that I've always loved was the first time Louise Hay, you know wonderful Louise Hay who's written all these books that we love. Louise Hay said the first time she public spoke, she was very nervous about that. But she, but she knew, she knew how this worked. And she made herself a promise that after she did this first public talk she did, she would not criticize herself. Isn't that hard? I mean, that's a really, really hard thing because how many of us have done something in the world and 20 people can say, oh my God, that was fantastic, you were great, you weren't, and one person says, gee, you're kind of off your game. And we go home with that one thought, gee, you were off your game today. It's like, wow, why was I off my game? I was off my game, I didn't know I was off my game, they saw I was, no, 20 other people loved it, or 100 other people loved it, you know? But what, and I think that's that, that inner critic you know, and, and that inner critic shows up in what we do after as well, with what we say to ourselves. So I think we could learn from Louise and just say, you know, I'm going to do this, and even if you just say for 24 hours, maybe that's it, for 24 hours, I will not criticize myself after I do this. Then I'll be open to feedback. Then I'll be open to a little uh, self-evaluation. You know, yeah, I get it. It hurts to be criticized. We, nobody likes that. Nobody gets up in the morning and at the end of our prayers says, oh, and by the way, God, you know, I would love to have some criticism today. Nobody does that, you know. Um, look, this is the thing. Have you ever seen a statue built to a critic? No, no. So then why do we take that criticism so, so seriously? Just tell yourself, I'm not listening. You know, I expressed, that's enough. The fact that I expressed, that is a success, and then we let it go, because in this moment, you can recognize my expression was me following the call of my soul. It was me following what spirit within me wants to do. You know, so if I were thinking about unblocking, you know, I would consider all these things. What's, what do I do in preparation to create? What happens when I create? And what do I say to myself after? So today, what is life giving you? You know, what is life giving to you? I've just noticed in this last week, and, and, and this has been true for me, but even more so, that I find I sometimes I'm getting so stressed during the week that I go outside, and just being outside, I feel like I'm able to breathe. You know, like my whole being opens up a little more. And, um, and usually when I'm walking my dog, I see some flowers, and I'll go and smell the flowers, and just smelling that, seems to shift everything for a moment. So it shows me there is another reality other than the one that I'm talking about in my head all the time. See, So I would ask you to think about this morning, who in your life right now supports you becoming the fullest expression of yourself? Think about that. Who's in your corner for you 110%? Who supports you in being the fullest expression of yourself? So I'd ask you to see their faces in your mind's eyes now. You might close your eyes for a minute and think of your people, your tribe, your group. You know, your peeps. And how they support you being the fullest expression of yourself. And now see yourself as being there for them, completely supportive of their creative expression. And so it seems to me that spiritual truth is expressing what is within you, which is of God, brings us back to life. In this time when so many people are feeling very, very challenged, I would ask you to think about what is within me, that if I express it, it will bring me back to life. Let's pray. 
So we turn our attention inward right now, recognizing we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit. The presence of the living God that's everywhere is right here where we are. It surrounds us, it fills us, it's the truth about us, it sustains us, it upholds us, that we are one. The high mystical truth is that we are one, one with God, one with each other. And so in this awareness of our oneness, I speak the word for each and every one of us. And I speak this word that that which is within us comes forward into a wonderful loving expression. And if the conversation in our head is limiting or negative or fearful, we say peace to our mind. If that fear and doubt has moved into our body, we say peace to our body, peace to my body, peace to my body of affairs, peace to my life, peace to my family. I know for each and every one of us that we have everything we need within us right now, that the gift has already been given that God's grace is given freely to each and every one of us. And we are gracious, gracious receivers. We receive all that God has to give. And in turn, we give it back out to the world. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents and children and grandparents and nieces and nephews and everyone that we hold near and dear. And we know the love of God surrounds them, it fills them, it heals them, it uplifts and sustains them. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. Because we remember, I am of the race of Christ. You are of the race of Christ. We are of the race of Christ. We bless our church, all churches everywhere. Synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together. That there is raising up for all of us and for the world that we live in. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I say thank you, God, for this and every blessing that comes into our lives. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen.